there's almost never a good place to put the word in a scientific writing. Welcome back to PhD Coffee Time. This is the online community for you as PhD student to get motivation, peer support, and practical tips during your PhD. Today, I want to share a little more about academic writing, which I think is the slowest and most painful step of getting your thesis done and finishing a PhD. I don't know about you, but not many people teach me officially what to expect in a scientific paper. So today I just want to make this a simple practical reminder. If you are in your PhD, I hope you will watch and tell me if these are all tips that you have already implemented or if, if these tips are reminding you something new. I'm a reviewer and I get annoyed when I see these little things that you could fix over an hour of edit if you are mindful. So if you're finishing a thesis, make sure to watch to the end of this video and check all of this problem I'm stating in this video. That will help your reviewer to have a better mood and your examiner going to focus on your science instead of being annoyed by thinking you didn't put in the time and effort to optimize this paper or thesis. So this video is a little different. I'd like to give you a few proofreading challenges and you have 10 seconds to think of the right answer and then I will reveal the answer in the end. So feel free to hit pause to the video and take as much time as you need it to decide which ones are the correct options. The cells were fixed with 4% PFA in a 24 well plate. Require a hyphenation because 24 well is now an adjective, so you need a hyphen. But when you are explaining there are 24 wells, you don't need a hyphen. Another hyphenation challenge. When you have 100 milliliter as an adjective describing the flask, you need a hyphen. But when ml milliliter is a unit, you don't need a hyphen. A lot of time we need to make two words together and you put hyphen together so that it become an adjective. Chitin binding protein or DNA binding protein. You have a hyphen in between and that is an adjective. And if you omit that hyphen, it changed the meaning of that sentence. When you have hyphens, they are typically called the compound modifiers for a noun. For example, a well-mixed solution with a hyphen. High-fat diet, low-fat diet. And if you want to learn more about different compound modifiers, you can refer to the Chicago Menu of Style to find out more. Vials were then baked at 450 degrees Celsius for two hours. Do you think we need a space between hour or between degrees Celsius? In the case of SI units, you need to put a space between the number and the unit. Degrees Celsius do not need a space between number and unit. We always work with scientific SI units, centimeters, meters. Remember to put a space between the number and the unit. Temperature, degrees Celsius don't need a space in between because they are not SI units. So there are style guides that you could look up and find out more about how to consistently write these units. But whenever you put a unit and put a number in your paper, I hope you will remember this video. Google it, I'm sure there is advice out there. Make it consistent. The good way to double check 300 page thesis is just to do control fine. Control fine meter, control fine micrometer, and add the space back. 
and you get an instantly more professional looking manuscript. When you abbreviate in science, it is important to consider when you use abbreviation. Sometimes abbreviations are helping the readers to understand your following writing, so you use it. It may be a typical jargon in the field everyone knows about. And when you use abbreviation, make sure they are used consistently in the same way throughout your paper. Because sometimes a paper is written over two years and you change little things and they are not consistent. This is a bad writing practice if you can't stick to the same abbreviation in the same one article. I'm just copying a paragraph of text from this paper. I want to showcase the importance of using abbreviation effectively. First question you need to ask yourself is, is it clearer to abbreviate? Sometimes when you have a long name and you need to use it over and over and over again in the article, it would be better to save space and abbreviate these words. And a lot of time when these abbreviations may be more recognizable in your scientific community, you should be using the abbreviation. It would be clearer to the reader what you are talking about. So another consideration will be consistency. You want to pick an abbreviation that is consistent with the rest of the literature. And you also want to be consistent throughout the thesis. Sometimes you're writing over two years of time and you might have changed your mind how you abbreviate certain terms. Make sure you control F and find all of these abbreviations and make sure you have a consistent method of abbreviating everything. Also, when you're using abbreviation, make sure you at least use it two to three times in the article before you abbreviate it because what's the point of abbreviating if you do not use it later on in the article? As a general rule of thumb, you do not want to start with numbers. You can almost always reword your sentence and make it begin with a total of 1,029 participants completed the survey instead of 1,029 participants completed the survey. And typically in journalism and in most of the scientific writing, the style guide will explain in details. But in most style guides I have seen, it will expect us to spell out the number from number 1 to 10. Whenever you're in doubt, make sure you go to the journal and read the style guide. And they always have a section to tell you what to do with these numbers and how to write it with the same style as an author. In scientific writing, you do not want to use possessive apostrophe S. This is mostly for informal use. And when you're writing a scientific article, you should always try to restructure your sentence so that you can avoid using the possessive S. There's always a way to rephrase your structure of sentence. In academic writing, we try to avoid the use of number in the start of a sentence. And we also try to avoid using apostrophe possessive S. The last point is, unless you really mean it, you really shouldn't use these words. Proof, significant. Unless you're a mathematician, you should never use the word proof. There's almost never a good place to put the word proof in a scientific writing. And when you use significant, that is a word that we keep for only biostatistical analysis. So if your p-value is not less than 0.05, do not use the word significant. Although you think the data looks significant, it shouldn't be used. 
All right, this sums up some of the common mistakes and most popular complaints from principal investigator. I hope these examples are helpful and remind you a few basics. These are really not rocket science, but you'll be surprised how many students don't know to do this because most often PIs are busy and they don't have the time to walk you through all of this. And that's why this channel is made to help you get bite-sized content that you can share with your lab. And if you are a PI and you think my work is helpful to save you tons of hours explaining this to your student, go ahead to share this video with them. And I hope they will come and join my platform and learn how to be more detail-oriented writers. If you're a student, you can talk to your friends about it so that everyone can focus on the fun part of science, struggle less with the nuances. I hope these are helpful. Thank you for watching and I'll see you the next time.